This is a protein and fiber rich salad that is also a great meatless meal option. So reducing our mid intake to less than 500 grams per week, 18 ounces per week, uh, lowers our risk of several types of cancers according to the World Cancer Authorities. So this solid is also easy to prepare and the ingredients are low in cost. And you're also getting in that meatless meal that we talk about um, into your diet. Sorry, I'm just grabbing a plate here. No problem. Um, we can right. talk about the tuna, or do you want to, yeah, talk a little bit about the tuna? So the canned tuna that we're using today is skipjack. And the reason, one of the reasons for that is that it is considered to be lower in mercury than the white albacore tuna. So when you're choosing your canned tuna, look at the ingredients, check that it's, it's skipjack or check that it says canned light tuna, not white tuna, and you're getting a little bit less mercury that way. The other thing is it's also a little bit less expensive. So we're already using a budget uh, friendly item, which is canned tuna, but then the light tuna is also a little bit uh, less expensive as well. There you go. There we go. <laughs> now we can hear you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes, we're, we're using that tuna. Before we get into the tuna, um, we're going to, this is going to be like a couscous salad as well. Um, one of our favorites to use, and now we're using whole grain, right, Daniela? So whole grain couscous salad, that would yes. be considered a whole grain. Yeah, do you want me? Yeah, so the whole grain, it actually, when, when I looked at the information, if you have one cup of um, whole grain couscous, it's about eight grams of fiber versus two grams of fiber in the regular couscous. So it's a great way to bump up your fiber and get your whole grains, uh, which is also part of what uh, our cancer, world cancer authorities tell us to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you can tell the difference, it wouldn't say on the package, but it's a little bit darker. Actually, you know what? I have a regular couscous to show you the difference. Um, similar size, right? But it's a little bit darker. And that's, so that's your whole grain. So to make it, again, one of our favorite whole grains to use just because um, it takes like three minutes to cook. Um, and you, again, you don't need to turn on your stove. You don't need to turn on your oven. You just need, don't need a tea kettle. So we're, we're going with that again, no cooking. Uh, if you don't include the tea kettle, it's an appliance. I think we can bend the rules a little bit. We'll, we'll bend the rules. And also, what do you think, like if you needed the hot water, could you also use, like if you're in the hotel nearby, the hospital, um, the coffee maker, no, to heat up the water, is that? Uh, if you want to have those in the hospital. Really, yeah, if you want to get creative with it, sure. I mean, it could work. Just make sure it's really clean. I, you know. Oh, that's uh, good. You don't want coffee flavor couscous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wouldn't be the greatest. But uh, otherwise, yeah. I mean, you just need hot, hot water or hot liquid. So even if you were making it at home and you want to add a little bit more flavor, you can even add like stock, like hot broth to it as well if you wanted. Um, and it, it would absorb all of that flavor. But otherwise, you just need a tea kettle. Uh, bring it to a boil and to cook it, it's a one to one uh, ratio. Uh, so, one part of your whole wheat couscous to one part of your hot liquid, um, and then co cover it. So, you see, I had it and I put the couscous in the bowl and then just cover it to trap the steam. So, I had a plate, you could put like a dish cloth if you want, uh, or like some saran wrap, um, just cover it to trap the steam, set it aside, and three minutes done. Super, super easy. Now we're going to assemble the rest of the salad. So we get our bowl. Um, I'll start off with some onion, which is going to add some nice flavor and some texture. And again, this is a really nice, again, assembly recipe. We're pretty much opening up some cans, some jars, you know, and tossing it together. Um, so you can use whatever vegetables that you have. Um, if you don't like onion, Maybe you have some carrot or celery or even like some peppers. It's a great way to use up some of those odds and ends if you have them. So I just 
sliced up a little bit of onion, red onion. And this is red onion, but you can use any onion as well. Add it to bowl. And then to this, we're going to add our beans. So we're adding, these are cannellini beans, white cannellini beans. You can even add chickpeas, lentils. Um, we're using canned. Again, we're, we're making it as easy and as accessible as possible. Um, these are great. Daniela, for nutrition, canned versus fresh, what are we looking at? Oh, for nutrition, um, protein is the same, fiber is the same. The only thing you may want to look at is whether the ingredients include salt. Um, and that would, but also with these beans, you do need to rinse them, right, to get rid of the indigestible fibers or carbohydrate. And you would probably be getting rid of a little bit of salt that way. The other thought, I guess, is that if it has salt in it, you know you're not going to add it to the recipe because it's you already have salt, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely great point. Yeah, so drain and rinse. Um, and I think you could probably find no sodium added canned beans now. I, I've seen those in the grocery store. So yeah. if you're looking to really reduce it, you can definitely choose one of those. Um, but they're already cooked. All that work is done for you. Makes it really, really easy. So we're gonna add a can to this. And then for the tuna, um, like Daniela mentioned, uh, skipjack or light tuna, correct? Light tuna is another light. one. Even um, now you might see that the tuna is packed in either water or oil, um, you know, what, what you choose. I tend to, and this is just my recommendation, I tend to try to look for the one packed in olive oil, um, just because that's an, added ingredient that I don't have to spend for, right? Because it already has the olive oil in there. So I'm making a dressing, you know, no reason to, you know, waste. So there is packed as a tuna, it's packed in olive oil. This was just in a, in a jar, but you can find the one in the can as well, either one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a little bit of that olive oil to this. don't have to and I think usually especially in like in the can it's usually the same price whether it's packed in oil or packed in water so might as well get that extra ingredient take out some of this tuna in here and again if you don't like tuna you know there are other products you can find salmon as well they have like boneless skinless salmon in a can now so you can use that all right. Yeah, the other great thing about the tuna or the salmon is that they're rich in omega-3 fatty acids. So um, you're also providing some nutrition that is good for your heart, your eyes, your mental health. Um, so yeah, both options are great. Beautiful. So I'm just, I just broke up that tuna a little bit in here. Now it already has the olive oil, so I'm going to add some acid in the form of red wine vinegar. You can use you know, lemon juice, any vinegar would be great, um, but that acidity is really gonna help to balance that dish. And we're gonna just toss it up and we'll add some black pepper. Um, again, you taste it as you go. If you don't need salt, like, like Danielle mentioned, if you're Beans already had some salt in it. You might not need to add any extra salt. So sort of taste it as you need. Um, and that tuna is, is going to sometimes have salt in it as well, right, Daniela? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You might not need it. I'm just going to add a little bit of black pepper to that. And then if you want to splurge, we'll add some herbs. We'll add some fresh herbs. And I'm just sort of just tearing it. I'm not getting fancy with it, just, this is mint, um, which might seem a little odd with tuna, but it, I think it works really, really well. It's really nice and fresh. You can add basil, you can add parsley, or again, like the first recipe, go for a dry, dry herbs would work really well. Um, usually with dry, you're going to add a little bit less just because the flavors are a lot more concentrated, so you don't need to add as much here right toss that up and this is pretty much the extent of it 
again, no stove, no oven needed. Now, if you're concerned about your fiber intake, then this is really versatile, right? Because you can just make it more so with the tuna. Um, or if you're having um, uh, sensitive, sub smell sensitivities, then just go with the beans and skip the tuna. So there's a lot of possibilities with this recipe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so here's a couscous. Took the plate off. Um, that's pretty much all you need to do to cook it. And I'm going to fluff it up with a fork. And there we go. So, I mean, you can't really get any easier than that, especially for a whole grain. Um, and then in terms of, like, the price, usually you can get a big bag. Like you get a pretty large bag of the holy couscous for, like, maybe 4 or $5. But, again, that's, that's a pantry item that will last quite a long time in your pantry um, and will make quite a bit. So... It's a pretty good value for, for what you're getting. Uh, and then in terms of convenience, like I said, you can't really beat the ease of preparation there. Um, so nice and fluffy. Now we're ready to plate. So I'm gonna put a little bit down on my plate. And again, you can just toss this right into the bowl as well. Just to make it easier. We'll take that tuna bean salad and I'm just going to pour it right on top. And so the couscous on its own is, I mean, it's not super flavorful. It's, it's pretty neutral in terms of flavor. So this dressing with the, uh, the oil from the tuna and the red wine vinegar is going to really get soaked up into that couscous make it super flavorful and there we have it that looks great that looks great um sorry Tina, go ahead. it's okay i just it's just that i found this other piece of information last night about couscous um so sometimes they say it doesn't have as much nutrition as others but it actually has the highest amount of selenium which is another antioxidant um, that we could potentially be deficient in. So if you hear people say, oh, you need your selenium, know that your whole grain couscous is a good source of that. There you go. So you got your tuna, your beans, and a little selenium, a little extra selenium. Or your whole <laughs> so there you go, that's our second assembly, no cook recipe. Um, 